Hey kids! So our topic today is Hall of Fame, where is Jesus buried? So let's start with prayer by talking to Jesus. So in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Father, may you be glorified in my life so that those of all ages will see you when they look at me. Beautiful one, you have called me to be strong and courageous. I pray that I will not be afraid or terrified because of them. For Lord, you go with me. You will never leave me. You will never forsake me. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, let's start with the legends we admire. Those who have had great impact on the world of music, whether living or dead. They're often rewarded a place in the Hall of Fame. Here they are memorialized and remembered throughout the time of music that they have written. Jesus, however, is not remembered forever for something he did, but rather something he is continually doing. Jesus did not die only to be remembered within the walls of a building, but rose from the dead and continues to impact the whole world. He brings new life to all who believe in him. Oh, he surely does. So we're gonna look at some odd Hall of Fames across the United States, all right? So the first one for you, the Robot Hall of Fame in <laughs> Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Sounds fun. Jimmy D's favorite, the National Barber Hall of Fame in Canal, Winchester, Ohio. We know his barber is not there. <laughs> Pinball Hall of Fame in Las Vegas, Nevada, and the National Toy Hall of Fame in Rochester, New York. Ooh, that would be a fun one. One last one, the Roller Derby Hall of Fame in Brooklyn, New that York. That sounds fun. Yeah. Super fun. What would you choose if you could visit a tomb or a memorial site of any famous musician or person? Uh, think about it for a little bit. What do you think, Ryan? Who Abraham would you Lincoln, for sure. Mm. It'd be Lincoln. All yeah. right. Some musicians continue to impact the world after their death through their music. Many people flock to their burial sites or their Hall of Fame in which they are honored to pay homage to their memory and their legacy. Jesus, too, continues to impact the world. But unlike these long past famous musicians, people cannot flock to a gravesite where he is buried to honor his great legacy because Jesus is not dead. No, he isn't. Do you know what the most visited gravesites in the United States are, Ryan? I wonder. Johnny Cash, famous country singer. Yeah. Abraham Lincoln, just like where you want to go, Frank Sinatra, John F. Kennedy, and Elvis Presley. Ah, nice. So for right now, I just want you to imagine this scene as I read the Gospel of Luke to you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the death of Jesus. It was about 12 o'clock when the sun stopped shining and darkness covered the whole country until 3 o'clock and the curtain hanging in the temple was torn in two. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, in your hands, I place my spirit. He said this and died. The resurrection of Jesus. Very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb carrying the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the entrance to the tomb. So they went in, but they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. They stood there puzzled about this, when suddenly two men in bright shining clothes stood by them. Full of fear, the women bowed down to the ground as the men said to them, Why are you looking among the dead for one who is alive? He is not here. He has been raised. Remember what he said to you when he, when he was in Galilee. The Son of Man must be handed over to sinful men to be crucified and three days later rise to life. Then the women remembered his words returned from the tomb and told all of these things to the 11 disciples and all of the rest. Jesus died and was buried, but he rose from the dead on the third day. Thanks, Ryan, for reading that to us. The resurrection can be verified both from the eyewitness records that we have in Scripture and a variety of other avenues. This is so interesting. One example of evidence is the impossibility of Jesus' father's followers stealing his body. Based on our knowledge of how the Roman tombs were constructed, 
They were constructed well and hard to open, and his tomb being heavily guarded by elite soldiers. We can also look at the marked change in growth in the number of Christians after Jesus' death and resurrection and measure the stories of the early Christians who were martyred for their faith in gruesome ways as significant evidence. Who would do that for a made-up story, Ryan? Exactly. Well, Jesus raised people from the dead. No one has ever raised themselves from the dead by their own power until Jesus. Yeah, so, so true. How awesome is, is that, right? All of the conviction that those people that saw the risen mm -hmm. Christ. Jesus revealed to us that he would rise from the dead, and then he did, proving that he has power over death. The fulfillment of this claim gives us the ultimate proof that he is truly who he says he is, the Son of God. The resurrection changes everything. Jesus fulfills all of his promises God has made to his people from the beginning of time. He said he would, and indeed has, come and rescue us from sin, darkness, and death. We're going to talk a little bit about our baptism. But before we do, let's see if you can guess what parish leader is pictured in each of the following photos. Here we go. Who do you think that is? He's appeared in a few of our videos here for Faith Development and Children's Liturgy. Oh, that gives it away. Yeah. <laughs> no, cut that out, cut that out. Jimmy no, D, said that. the great Jimmy D. All right, next one. If you look at this photo, I don't know if you can read the captions written along the side, but it's taken in front of Waldrug. Father Ron. The next photo. Boy, that's the most beautiful baby I've ever seen. Who do you think that is? <laughs> Yours truly. They called me C-3PO when I was a kid. Look at those eyes. All right, next one up. Boy, that's a scary costume, right? Typical this time of year. Yep. I think that's just another Saturday night for Father Ron. Next up. Boy, there's a teen there. <laughs> Again, Father Ron. And we're saving the best one for last. You know, we're in this iconic series, and here's an icon uh, on our screen, and that is no other than Father Ron dressed up as Elvis Presley, rocking it out. Mm -hmm. One more for you that I almost forgot. <laughs> Try to take a guess. Who do you think this one is? Danny <laughs> Hippis. There's a head of hair there, too. Lucky yep. you, right? There's yours truly, yep. Yeah. Jesus' death and resurrection also means something for us specifically. Our sins are forgiven, our relationship with God has been restored, and we have been given the grace to find new life with Jesus here and hope for eternal life with him one day in heaven. We are united to Jesus' resurrection through our baptism. Going into the water is a symbol of of our death with Christ. And coming out of the water is a symbol of our resurrection with Christ when we become sons and daughters of God. Baptism is an essential part of being a Christian in our Christian life. Jesus directly commanded his apostles to go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded of you. All right, time for a break. Let's go to Mr. Jorn, who is going to share a little bit about the five symbols of baptism. Hey guys, once again, coming to you live from the scene is Mr. Jorn. I join you today from the River Jordan because we're talking all about baptism. Did you know that there are five symbols that have a lot of meaning that were used at your baptism? I guess this, you probably know a few of them. First, your cross. When you were baptized, we received the sign of the cross on our foreheads. The cross is the greatest act of love that has ever been or ever will be done. We are marked with the sign of the cross because we are claimed for Christ Jesus. We are his. Okay. 
Symbol number two, the white garment. Okay, no, I do not still have one from my baptism. This is a sweater, but you get the idea. Okay, the white garment is a symbol of purity. White symbolizes that the stain of original sin is no longer upon the child whose soul is wiped clean by the sacrament of baptism. The garment represents the child's Christianity, and we are called to bring it unstained into the kingdom of heaven. Okay, next up, we got a couple of oils. Okay, first, oil of chrism. Jesus was anointed priest, prophet, and king, and we are called to be anointed as the same by virtue of our baptism. Okay, next is the oil of the catechumens. Okay, this oil dates back to thousands of years ago when soldiers would rub oil on themselves for strength for the battle ahead. The oil of catechumens give the infant strength to live out their Christian journey. Okay, water. Water reminds us that if that it is God who gives us life. Symbolizes cleansing and purity. Water also washes away our sins. Okay. And finally, light. The godparents light the baptismal candle off of the tall Easter candle in church. Jesus is the light of the world. Parents and godparents are called to keep the flame burning in their child's life. Sacraments like baptism are outward signs of God's love for us. It's God coming down to remind us that he is with us. Our faith is full of beauty and tradition. The next time you are at church and there's a baptism, pay attention to these beautiful symbols. And now back to the studio. Thank you, Mr. Jordan, for sharing those five symbols of our baptism. You know, my daughter gets baptized this week and probably it'll be after when you guys watch this video, but I'll be sure to look out for those on Sunday. How wonderful. So exciting for you yeah. and Mel. If we think about our resurrection, it could probably seem like something we will experience in the distant future. But through the grace of our baptism, we actually experience this promise of new life right now. How lucky are we, right? Mm -hmm. As we experience difficult life changes like moving, going to a different school, not making a sports team, or a friendship ending, we can have hope in the promise of new life. Even if we cannot see it now, Jesus is at work in our loss and our sadness. Maybe you will learn to love where you have moved and find incredible new friends. Or maybe not making a sports team means you will have more free time and find a new hobby that you love. Maybe the loss of a friendship means finding greater support in your family members or building up a relationship with a sibling. Always finding the positive in yeah, everything, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if you have experienced the death of a friend or a loved one, the resurrection gives us hope in the midst of our grief that death is not the end of the story for both of us or our loved ones. God has conquered death and while our bodies die, our souls will experience eternal happiness. While we cannot all relate to each other's experiences of life, change, or loss, we can see at least that we are not alone as we face these difficult situations. Through our baptism, we not only become a son or daughter of God, but also become a part of his family, the church. In this community, we find support, hope, and love. We are also given new life through the sacraments of the church. For example, we are forgiven of our sins and given a fresh start through the sacrament of reconciliation, and we are given the literal body and blood of Jesus in the Eucharist which brings us new life now and the promise of eternal life in the future. Wow. 
awesome. Eternal life, that's what we're all striving for, right? Mm -hmm. Because of the resurrection, Jesus' impact cannot be contained in a hall of fame. For he is alive and is never done working in our world or in our lives. Speaking of Jesus not being contained in a hall of fame, I want to go find Mr. Jorn and he'll tell us of some hall of fames. Coming to you once again live from the scene, it's Mr. Jorn. Here I am in front of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because I hear we've been talking Hall of Fames. Now, the power of Jesus is definitely too big to have in one Hall of Fame because he is very much alive. However, there are some famous Hall of Fames that house some pretty interesting stuff, like this, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame found in lovely Cleveland, Ohio. Here we see displays of iconic rock and roll artifacts year round, including the largest exhibit of Beatles items. The museum shows visitors from different generations how the roots and pivotal moments of rock and roll influenced current artists and the future of music. Okay, there's also the less famous RV Hall of Fame in Elkhart, Indiana. This Hall of Fame honors the leaders in the RV industry while also documenting the history of the vehicle dating back to the 1920s. This museum has a winding highway that runs through the building. If you are the RVing type, get in your camper and make a pilgrimage to all things RV. I hear RVs have really become more popular as of late. And finally, another Hall of Fame that is a little closer to home is the Freshwater Hall of Fame and Museum in Hayward, Wisconsin. This place is a shrine to anglers. They have a big muskie, 143 foot long, 41 foot tall concrete steel and fiberglass fish. The hall also tracks freshwater fishing world records and honors legendary anglers, fishing guides, and artists who have tackled fishing themes. Maybe you will catch the world record muskie that will land your name in this museum. Back to you. You know, Hayward, Wisconsin, Freshwater Fishing Hall of Fame, 143 <laughs> foot muskie wow. there, um, replica. Um, definitely have to get up there to check that out sometime. Yeah. See if I can convince my wife to take a six hour <laughs> ride to Hayward, right? Just to see a dead fish. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's take a look at a few resurrection quotes. So here's the first one for you. We just want you to reflect on these and see if any of the words stand out to you as we share them with you. St. John, O oh death, where is your sting? O oh hell, where is your victory? Christ is risen and you are overthrown. Christ is risen and the demons are fallen. Christ is risen, and the angels rejoice. Christ is risen, and life reigns. St. Jose Maria, the Lord's triumph on the day of the resurrection is final. Be filled with hope. Jesus Christ is always victorious. <laughs> Good one. St. John Paul II, there is no evil that Christ does not face with us. There is no enemy that Christ has not already conquered. There is no cross to bear that Christ has not already borne for us and does not now bear with us. You going to share with us a couple discussion questions? Sure, yeah. I can do that. If you could be in the Hall of Fame for one thing, what would it be? Sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody that knows me knows that's true. Who inspires you? My parents. <laughs> All right. Okay. What about their life that resonates with you? They're always generous and giving. Oh All my gosh. Time. See, you know these. Why is it important that we have saints to look up to? Because we're all called to be saints because a saint is simply somebody who's in heaven with God, oh, right? Oh, wow. Good so, one, Ryan. Yeah. Good one. All right. So we're going to lead you through a prayer here. So in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Take a moment. Look at your hands. Notice the well-defined lines that run through your palms. Look at the details in your fingerprints, which are so unique 
that you can be identified with just a partial print that is left behind. Your hands were created to make a difference. They were created to glorify God in a way that only you can. Your hands should serve as a reminder every day of your willingness to do the work of God through your life. As you look at your hand and pray silently, ask God to help you do all of the great things that he has imagined for you to do in your life. As we close with a Hail Mary together. Hail Hail Mary, Mary, full full of grace, grace, the the Lord Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hall of Fame. You know, we're not going to find Jesus' body in a tomb or in a Hall of Fame Mm -mm. because he is very much alive and at work in our lives today. Yes. How lucky are we to have unlimited access to him. So lucky. So lucky. Thank Thank you you. so much for joining us. And as always, go, go, God, go. go.